what drew me to the Ptarmigan Project was the fact that it was an ecological process that had up till now not been explored. The interactions between ptarmigan and shrubs uh, are a, it's a very widespread phenomenon that's going on in the Arctic. You look at any tall willow and it has this very, very stunted appearance. And I think what people don't realize is that it's being pruned by these birds, these huge flocks of birds. Everybody is interested in how um, climate change is causing shrubs to expand, but nobody's looked in depth into how herbivores are interacting with that. More and more, the research is, is directed towards climate change. There are a lot of people with NSF funding that's climate change related, and there have been several studies over the past decade um, that indicate that indeed the ecology of the Arctic is changing at a fast rate. As the ice melts, the energy from the sun is no longer being reflected. When you have dark spots on the Earth's surface, whether it be open ground or open water, the sun's rays are being absorbed instead of reflected. So the process of warming is sped up. Winter and spring habitat for rock and willow ptarmigan is, is not decreasing. However, the requirements of, of these species of ptarmigan in the Arctic are different in the summer, in the breeding season, than they are in the winter. So even though shrubs are expanding, so that's increased habitat for ptarmigan in the winter, it may be that their habitat in the summer is not increasing. People are concerned about ptarmigan conservation, particularly rock ptarmigan and white-tailed ptarmigan at lower latitudes because they tend to occur in alpine areas. And alpine areas, because of climate change, are shrinking. And so a lot of species are having to move uh, further up in altitude to, to track their alpine habitat. So white-tailed ptarmigan, uh, in particular, are of conservation concern for that reason. They, are, they just are in these pockets of alpine habitat, which are quickly disappearing. <laughs>